Here's a verdict. Mistrial on count one, which was the first degree murder count. Attempted second degree murder, guilty, which was the attempted murder of the three teenagers, one of the three teenagers in the car. Count two, guilty attempted. on attempted murder. Count second four, degree. attempted second degree murder. Guilty, again, on attempted second degree murder. And that has to do with the teenagers. And then guilty of hurling a deadly missile, joined by Paul Collin, a CNN legal analyst, and also Joey Jackson, CNN legal analyst here. Here's my thing. He's going to jail for a long time. Long time. He was convicted of everything but killing Jordan Davis. The three teenagers were not harmed in this shooting. They well, were not. They're, you, they're you still know, the, alive. The only, the only logical explanation for this verdict is that the jury hung on the issue of whether he acted in self-defense in firing the fatal shots into Jordan Davis. But remember, there was a second volley of shots which were directed at the car. Those were the attempted murder counts that the jury convicted on and, of course, for firing into the car. So I think, ironically, uh, you have a hung jury on the main issue, whether Jordan Davis's right. death was caused by his action, and firing on the fleeing vehicle, it seems like they convicted him of that. Sure, but well, it would make it rational. Benjamin Crump, uh, Trayvon Martin's family attorney, he's going, to, he's going to, to jail for a long time. Michael Dunn is. Um, but for what we have a verdict for now, it's for the attempted murder of the other three teenagers. He's not going to jail for murdering this young man. I think many people are happy that he's going to spend a, a, a long time in jail. But why does that, that kind of bothers me that they can't reach a verdict on whether this was murder or not. Am I wrong in that, for that feeling that I have? No, Don, it's bittersweet when you really think about it. Um, he's going to jail for a long time, but on the ultimate question of Jordan Davis and the value of this young black teenager's life, it remains a question. If I say uh, I felt in fear of a young black teenager, it could be an imaginary fear, it could be innuendo, that seems to be enough to grant you immunity under stand your ground or self-defense or whatever you want to call it, because I think it's a societal issue. It is an issue that we have demonized young black males, and we say they're gangsters, they're thugs, and it seemed like anybody who can come up with a fear. It was a hoodie with Trayvon. It was loud music with Jordan. It, what's, is it going to be next time when a young black male winks at somebody and they kill them? They say, well, I felt in fear of my life. That's what we're dealing with. And I have been rolled up on by people, and I've said this on television before, in my own neighborhood. I lived in Atlanta, predominantly white neighborhood, a very, an affluent neighborhood. Let's just put it out there. What are you doing here? And my first initial reaction is, what the, what the hell are you doing here? This is my house. This is my neighborhood. I pay taxes in this Be neighborhood. Careful, Don. Who are you? Who are you to ask me what I'm doing here? And if I have some sort of a reaction that you think is intimidating, then you have the right to pull out a gun and shoot me? Hell no, you don't have that right. That's why I'm bothered by this. That's what bothers me. Now, if you, if, go ahead, go ahead. Now, Don, Don, as an American citizen, you should have that absolute right.